How do you combine trading indicators to improve the performance? Now, most people just take a combination of a couple of indicators and trade them just because someone else is doing it without validating whether it actually works. My name is David from Critical Trading and in this video I'm going to take a popular indicator called RSI and combine it with another indicator called ADX to see if the profitability gets improved. As always I will run an extensive backtest to do this, this time on over 20 years of data with a combined total of 2336 trades. So to find out how exactly to combine RSI and ADX to get an equity curve like this one, stick around till the end of this video. Because there are so many indicators available, there's a lot to choose from. And for that reason, I decided I will start a new video series in which I'll be validating various indicator combinations. In each part of the series, I take an indicator, combine it with a couple of others and share with you the best combination. So if that's something you'd be interested in, consider subscribing to my channel and enable notifications by clicking that bell icon so that you actually get notified when I publish a new installment of these series. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is to test the RSI on its own without using any additional filters, tools or indicators. Now, I'm not a big fan of indicators in manual trading. In fact, I don't use any indicators when trading manually. However, when it comes to systematic strategies, RSI is so far one of the most useful indicators I personally came across. I've got RSI plotted below my price chart in turquoise color with period of 2. The yellow horizontal line is level of 15 on the RSI and is used as a basis of the buy setup I'm about to test. The setup is to buy when the RSI with period of 2 crosses below the level of 15, so below the yellow line. So the buy setups got generated in all these areas I'm just highlighting on the screen as we speak. At first sight, this setup seems to have some predictive value, at least within this time period we're looking at here. We can see that the dips below 15 on the RSI correspond with the market making small pullbacks, so looking good so far. Let me just zoom in a little bit so that I can go over the actual entry specifics. This is the candlestick on which the RSI2 crossed below 15, generating a buy setup. What I will be testing is a variation where the trade is open at open of the following day rather than close. This means that the long trade would have been open at the open of this candle, so at this price. The reason I'm conducting the test in this particular way is that I always test on daily timeframes as I only trade those and I want to ensure that my test is as realistic as possible. I want to simulate getting the trade signals after the close and sending the orders uh, into the market at the following day's open. This is how I normally trade with almost all my strategies. The exit I will be using in all tests um, in this video is just a standard exit I use when validating entry edge or entry element of a potential trading strategy. Close the trade when the current day closes above the previous day's high. So we've got this day's high at this price and we can see that the following day managed to close just slightly above it. So here it may not be 100% visible on the screen but the close is in fact higher than the previous high and so the exit signal gets generated on this day. Again I'm conducting the test with executions at the open of the following day as it's more practical so the trade would actually be closed at open of this candle which in this case has a positive effect as the market made a gap overnight in the direction of the trade. So that's all you need to know for now let's have a look at the results. The equity curve looks very promising as I said the RSI is by far probably the most useful indicator I came across and when used with short period settings like in this case it works very well as a mean reversion timing tool. This equity is based on daily time frames. I do all tests on daily time frames as I only trade on daily time frames. Now there's a number of reasons for that one of which being the fact that they have much less noise when compared to low intraday time frames and I believe it's actually much easier to develop systematic strategies on daily timeframes than on intraday timeframes. As far as the markets are concerned, this equity is based on four ETFs that track S&P 500, S&P 100, Dow Jones and Nasdaq. Tested from beginning of 2000, trading commissions that I get myself with my broker are included as always. 
But what about the equity curve? Well, as I said, it looks uh, quite promising, especially because the trading commissions are already included and the trades are executed at the open of the following day, which normally performs worse than entering at close. The equity seems to have a steady upward direction and is relatively smooth. That is up until this point where a significant drawdown gets generated and the volatility of the equity curve gets visually much, much higher than before. Now, typically mean reversion setups like this one will have high win rate and long periods with very smooth equity curves. But these periods are then naturally followed by a black swan event that results in a huge volatility, which is exactly what happened here. To be precise, the drawdown in this area amounted to over 40%. So the question is, what if we combine the RSI2 buy setup with an, another indicator with a view of improving the performance? Let's have a look. I will combine the RSI with indicator called ADX, which is short for Average Directional Index. The ADX is a trend following indicator as opposed to RSI, which is generally used um, as a mean reversion tool. As both of these indicators are of a different nature, um, they should, in theory, complement each other well. The reason I picked the ADX is to provide a market's direction filter and only take the buy setups generated by the RSI2 if the ADX's readings are saying that the market is moving up and is not choppy. So the upper indicator on my screen is the RSI that I've gone over just now with its period set to 2 and the buy level set to 15, which is plotted in the form of a yellow horizontal line. The bottom indicator is the ADX and is set to have a look back period of five bars. The actual filter itself is based on level 35 on ADX, which again I've plotted in a form of a yellow horizontal line. The filter is very simple. We only want to take the RSI2 buy setups if the ADX is above 35. So if the ADX reading at the time of RSI2 buy setup being generated is above this level, it's a valid signal, but if it's below, it's a pass. As I said, the rationale here is to have the ADX tell us whether the market is trending or not, where obviously we only want to take the RSI signals in the trending market. So in this area, we can see that the ADX got below the yellow level. And so the RSI 2 buy setup that got generated here is not valid. But if I just zoom out a little bit, we can see that the market started trending up resulting in ADX readings being above the acceptable level. And then market made a pullback and generated a buy signal on RSI 2, which is a valid signal. Another valid signal got generated here. And this is how the equity curve of RSI combined with ADX looks like. The red curve is the original test I made, so only the RSI 2 um, on its own, with the pale curve being the combination I've just gone over. At first sight, the equity curve itself didn't change much. It literally looks identical to the one of RSI2 on its own. The volatility of the equity curve in this area is similar. And also this area looks literally identical to RSI2 on its own. However, the area that would have certainly improved is the profitability. We can see that the equity curve of RSI2 combined with ADX has generated more profit. So let's have a look at the actual backtest report uh, figures as well. The results on the left belong to the RSI2 buy setup on its own, and the results to the right belong to the RSI2 combined with the ADX filter. I conducted both tests on four US ETFs that track the US stock market from 2000 up to now. Both tests are conducted on daily timeframes as I only test and trade those, uh, realistic trading commissions included, and a 50% margin assumed. On top of this, as I said before, um, I tested entering at open of the following day, which as opposed to entering at close, is far easier in practice as one can simply run automated strategy scanners to scan for the signals and then just uh, send the orders into the market to be executed at open. That's how I trade my systematic strategies. All in all, very realistic backtest results. So to go briefly over the results, we can see that in terms of profitability, the ADX filter definitely helped. Not only has the average annual return increased, the exposure, as in time spent in the market, has decreased and so the capital is used more efficiently. 
the number of trades actually went down, yet the overall profitability increased, resulting in an average trade size rising from 0.34% to 0.58%. The win rate has improved also, up from 67% to 71%. Now, if you are new to trading and um, specifically quantified systematic strategies, these numbers may seem very, very low to you, but in reality, they are relatively good. Also, please bear in mind that I share these results for your inspiration only. These are not to be final trading strategies by any means. Uh, fully fledged systematic trading strategies consist of other elements such as risk management and so on, which is far beyond the scope of these public videos I'm making here. You therefore need to do your own tests by taking these concepts and progressing them further yourself. Having said that, these setups are definitely a great foundation for doing so. But what about the risk? Let's have a look at the maximum drawdown as well. A clear improvement in this arena also. The maximum drawdown of the RSI 2 on its own is at almost 46%, which makes this setup not really tradable in practice in its current form on its own. Very, very few people would be able to withstand a drawdown of this size and continue trading the same setup without making any changes to it or simply stopping trading it altogether. On the other hand, the ADX filter reduces the maximum drawdown to around 35%. Now, it's still not tradable on its own for me personally, but it would certainly be an interesting addition to a bigger strategy portfolio. The sharp ratio increased to over 1, which is definitely good news. Overall, a very interesting filter to complement the RSI with. Definitely worth further investigation, testing and development, such as, for example, long and short version or even an intraday version. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video and took away a lot of practical inspiration for yourself. This is David at Critical Trading, signing out.